Right everyone, we've got a controller from a Hoover Infinity Vision HD tumble dryer. My neighbour's just bought this down, says my tumble dryer has died and all my towels are wet. Can you have a look at it? It's no lights on. There is one indicator light on this board somewhere. Somewhere around here. There. There's a little flashy indicator. And if we just zoom in to that slowly, you can see you've got the micro, you've got the various switches. You've got a little bit of corrosion on this board where the condensation has got to it. I might put some lacquer on this before I put it back. And yeah, the main thing is that when this LED is dead and there's no signs of life and your mains fuse and your plug is okay, then it's usually um, one of three things. The mains goes in here to the back of these two spay connectors on the back of this selector switch. And in there is a dual pole AC main switch, which when it's in the off position, which is there, the board is isolated and the mains is not connected. You switch it on, the mains is then connected to the board, goes down through this tracking to here, through this diode here, sorry, through this diode is rectified, so it's AC here, half wave rectified AC mains there, through this series resistor, and it's brown, brown, black, red, so that's a 1K 5% resistor, probably a 1.5 watt or a 1 watt, to that point there, and I'm looking at that point there, is this point here and it goes all the way up there to here to the across that those two connections there to there is this uh, 400 volt uh, 10 microfarad capacitor so that's the AC sorry the DC B plus high voltage 360 volts approximately um, reservoir capacitor so now often what happens is this chip goes here this chip in there the LNK 304 PN will blow. Can you see that in there lurking in the shadows down there? You can see it a little bit better there. Let's see if we can get a bit of uh, spot meter. Spot meter. There she is down there and shows that she blows okay and if that goes short circuit it takes out this resistor okay so you might have that and the chip blown or on some of them just this resistor blows because when you turn the mains on you get a quite a high surge current going through there to charge up a discharge capacitor so it's quite a high spike of current goes through there and these resistors fatigue so the first thing to do is to um, measure this resistor to make sure it's okay mention is that inspect the resistor carefully because if the actual chip has blown usually the uh, resistor is showing shine signs that the casing's been blown off or splits or cracks in it. Um, you can see on this one, just towards the right hand side, you can just see a very fine line. Can you see that just where the right wire is? You move in a bit inboard to where the stripes are, you see a line. And I think that might be a crack, so we'll investigate that in a moment. So I put it on ohms. You can see the meter here. I don't know if you can see the meter. Let's go out and see whether you can uh, catch the reading. This, this meter is not very bright but you might just be able to see it. If I uh, turn the lights off and then go spot meter focus to there somewhere you can see a little bit better can't you? Yes you can. All right. So we're checking this, this resistor down here on the left hand side of the picture at the moment and it should be 1k and it's reading I didn't see that. I'll move that so you can see the uh, mega ohms. It's reading 15 meg ohms, so that resistor is open circuit. There, this one has been blown open circuit. But the question is, if you just replace that and this chip is shorted, it'll just go bang again, all right? But experience has shown me that uh, on these controllers, they're about 40 or 50 pounds, I think. It, it's probably just that resistor has gone. Now, if you change it now without knowing whether that chip is faulty or not, the resistor might just go bang but without any test equipment it's quite difficult to you can't really short that out um, put a wire across the blown resistor because you know you'll get a huge current in rush and if this chip is is, is uh, damaged in there this integrated circuit the LNK 304 is damaged you'll end up with a, a bang and a flash and probably blow tracks off the back of the board and everything else but you know the resistors are about 2p each I haven't got a 1K 
one and a half watt resistor so I'm just going to make it out of three 330 ohms in series. I'm just going to stand them up on the board, bridge them next to this capacitor and down into the board so I've got three uh, one third watt resistors which will make our one watt or um, a half watt resistor, make one and a half watt resistor, okay? So we're going to replace this. Now if this is blown in here, the chip, this will explode again okay and the resistor will go bang. If you want to avoid that then what I've got here is a test system where I've got an isolation transformer and this is the mains alright at the moment I'm not connected to live or neutral because I've got a transformer so if you do do this with the real live mains make sure you're experienced and know what you're doing because it, dangerous voltages are involved okay so you could damage yourself spoil your day at the very least alright so what do you do okay so I've got a light bulb in series with this. I've got an ordinary bulb holder over there on my desk and there's a 40 watt light bulb so that if these are shorted together, i.e. there's a critical path for a short on the board, then just my light bulb will light up. If not, the light bulb filament will remain cold and when they're cold, they're quite low resistance, 25, 40 ohms, something like that, then the controller will work, okay? So we know that this resistor is blown because so we've checked it, but we don't know whether the chip is blown. So the first thing I do is just quickly change this resistor, swap that resistor out, and see where we go from there. There's a little bugger that's going to cause us our brief. I'm just going to snip one end of it, pull her out, find my tweezers, wherever they've gone. This is an emergency repair for a, a wife with damp towels. A couple of days before Valentine's Day. It's going to affect his chances on the night if he doesn't fix this and get it working. He won't be able to concentrate on what she's supposed to be doing because she'll be worrying about a tumble dryer. It's a bit sexist, isn't it? But anyway, it's a nice thing to do. So we're just going to heat those up. Pull these out, pull this out. He says, burning the capacitor while he's at it. Okay, there's one. Actually, pulled the end off. Look, is that what's happened to it? It's actually cracked. It's actually come off the end of its. Uh, of its end piece. Sod this for a game of soldiers. Well, that could have gone more smoothly, couldn't it? The other end, bit of solder on it. Pull the wire out, okay. Now, if you haven't got a solder sucker, we'll just do this without a solder sucker. Just going to put these in just like this. Okay, so they're both down flat on the board. One there, one there. We'll solder those properly in a moment. And we'll take the third resistor. it look presentable <clears throat> and then just solder this so I'm reason I'm using three resistors because I don't have the right value on an half watt resistor but you can get them online 1000 ohms is what you want Okay, so there you have it. It's in. I'm just going to touch up. A bit of touching up to do on the back here where these wires come out. Hold it. Bit.
Right, so you've got a 5p part there, 5 cents or something. So now we've replaced it, you can see the resistor just fell apart, so what's happened, the thermal shock of turning on and off and on and off has just made the end of the resistor crack around the actual peripheral and go open circuit. So there she is. All right. So now we've got 990 ohms, which is well within the 5% of, uh, of the allotted required voltage. And if I just put my mains in, we'll see whether the, the light bulb comes on, in which case the chip down here is blown. That thing. And if the light bulb doesn't come on and the, power, the controller powers up, in this case it was just the 5p resistor that needed changing, alright? So let's have a look. Alright, so... Uh, let's zoom out a little bit. I'm going to turn it on here, that's off there, so I'm going to turn it on there and then we're going to power it up via the light bulb again. If you've got, haven't got a light bulb when you put the resistor in, then if you do power it up, then stand back because this resistor could go bang again. But generally when there has been a catastrophic failure of this chip, you can see cracking and shilling on all the outside wire uh, casing of the resistor. Normally the resistor in here looks physically damaged. You know, it's the, the shock has overheated it, it's gone up in smoke. So I'm thinking this is going to work if I do this at the moment. We'll find out the light bulb lights up, we're going to have to check, change the chip as well. But usually it's just that, or that and that. And if you want to do belt and braces, you could just change both and it will work. Nine times out of ten. Save you 40 quid, all right. So, let's, let's put some of uh, Her Majesty's volts on it. And see what happens. See what happens. See if she goes or not. Ready? You ready for this? So 240 volts being fed in via a light bulb filament. Bang! Got you. Yeah, you see it? Can you see that? I'm not. Gonna, I'm just going to grab this by the knob end. See that light flash in there? It's all right. It's working. All right, so yeah, we've restored it. So in this case, it was just that simple 1,000 ohm resistor had blown. So he can go off and dry his towels, okay, so down there. And incidentally, if you um, have this connected to the mains and you turn it off, make sure you discharge that reservoir capacitor. Otherwise, it'll give you a nasty tingle because they do store some voltage in there when you switch off. All right, so that's that. That's how you fix a Hoover Infinity Vision HD tumble dryer dead controller. I hope you found that interesting. I saw the video wasn't very good, but it was an, it's a very impromptu video, just knocked out while he's waiting for me. So there you go. I hope, thanks for watching. If you found that interesting, then leave me a like down there and subscribe. If you're not subscribed, we appreciate that. And uh, yeah, cheers.